Today, we are going to talk about an incredible process that uses light, carbon dioxide, and water to make something awesome that we all love, sugar. Unfortunately, we cannot do this amazing, incredible process, which is known as photosynthesis. Some types of protists can do photosynthesis. Some types of bacteria can. And of course, plants can. Plants will be our focus for this video clip. Animals and amoebas just sort of missed out on this ability. But we do benefit from it greatly, as this process also produces oxygen, the very gas that we need in order to breathe. So this process is important for us to understand. First, a little background. Plants and animals need sugar, specifically glucose. Plants, as well as animals, use glucose to make ATP energy in a process known as cellular respiration. ATP energy is critical for cells to be able to carry out their cellular activities. But while we have to be in search of food to get glucose, plants instead can do photosynthesis to make their own glucose. So that's kind of nice because they don't have to go anywhere to get it. Plants have adaptations to make them able to carry out photosynthesis in a variety of environments. Here is the formula for photosynthesis. On the left side of the formula, you will find the reactants. That means these are the inputs. The plant has to have these in order to do photosynthesis. On the right side of the formula, you will see the products. That means those are the items that are produced by the plant, the outputs. Now, sometimes the formula is written a little differently. Technically, it needs to be balanced, and sometimes light is written on top of the arrow just to show that it's in the presence of light, so it may instead look like this. The C6H12O6, that product, it's a sugar, specifically glucose. Now, photosynthesis, it's not just a formula. Have you ever tried to capture light before? It's hard. Plants have light capturing molecules called pigments that help them do this. See, visible light, it has different wavelengths. Different wavelengths of light have different colors. If you have ever played with a prism before, you may have been able to see how light can be divided up into a rainbow of colors due to these different wavelengths. Well, one pigment that plants use for photosynthesis is called chlorophyll. Chlorophyll is an expert at absorbing red and blue light, but not so much green light. Because it does not absorb very much green light, it actually reflects green light. Therefore, many plants appear green to our eyes. There are more pigments besides chlorophyll that work with different wavelengths of light, and this can explain why green is not the only color that you see in plants. Chlorophyll is a pigment found in the chloroplast of plant cells. Convenient, they sound similar. This amazing organelle is not found in animal cells. There are two major reactions that occur in the chloroplast that, together, make up photosynthesis the light-dependent reaction, and the light-independent reaction. 